Hi. Well, as we're getting higher up now into the uh, mountains, pushing into the Cumbria Valley, I thought it might be worthwhile to have a chat about some of the medication we've got with us, specifically Diamox, and whether or not this is a medication that would be worthwhile for you to consider taking before you start to go on your trip. There's a lot of evidence, some of it is anecdotal to be fair, uh, but there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this is very, very useful um, at preventing um, acute mountain sickness or AMS. One of the um, studies published showed that it reduces the likelihood of somebody developing um, acute mountain sickness by about 50%. However, to put that in context, that study only looked at 11 people, so it wasn't exactly huge. The recommendations on uh, whether or not to take it do depend on whether or not you've been at altitude before. If you've had um, AMS previously, then that is a risk factor for further AMS, in which case it's advised that you pick up and start taking Diamox before you actually begin your ascent in the first place. So for example, if you were going to the Everest Base uh, Camp Trek, then you'd start taking this at, um, in Kathmandu before you even um, considered getting on the bus to head off to the airport from there. Diamox isn't a simple um, option for most people, there are some side effects to it. Now to be fair, those side effects are broadly mild, but in my personal experience can be quite irritating. Uh, the two main side effects that people uh, are aware of are the need to pass urine a lot because of the function of this medication. It's a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, so it works to help you flush out alkali, or base, which is done by dumping it straight into your urine. So to get rid of it, you get a pee more. That can be a little bit disruptive to some people. But for myself, the thing that has irritated me with this medication is you can get pins and needles in the hands and the feet, and oddly in the face. Now I've found when I'm hiking around, I've not had any problems with the medication. But when I've stopped, when we've reached our um, camp lodge for the evening, or if we're just taking a rest, then very quickly my feet tend to start to sting inside. Um, one of my friends has described it as like having been stung with nettles inside underneath your skin. It is an unpleasant feeling. Now, whilst the, the side effects of Diamox like that may be unpleasant for you, the problems that you get with acute mountain sickness, so headache, nausea, vomiting, extreme fatigue, all of those things, including difficulty with breathing, are much, much worse. So another way that you can determine whether or not you need to take this medication is looking at what your risk factors are. As we've mentioned, the first risk factor is having had acute mountain sickness previously. Other things would be alcohol, because that's going to affect your breathing, benzodiazepines or any other form of sleeping medication, possibly having low levels of iron. So we, know, we do know that women are slightly higher risk of having AMS compared to that of chaps, and there are some studies that show low levels of haemoglobin uh, may be associated with an increased risk of AMS. If you've actually come to the area with any upper respiratory tract infections, coughs, colds, things like that, all of those are going to be affecting your breathing and likely make your risk of AMS that much higher. I've definitely been taking uh, Diamox. I got mine from travel clinics in Coventry uh, before I came out here. Some people prefer to wait to save a little bit of money and buy it on location. But then you do have the slight risk of making sure that you're buying the right thing and that you're actually buying the drug that you think you're getting here. Okay, I think I'm just going to grab the uh, camera for a minute. I've just had a bit of a start because just had a yak come up behind me there. So the risk factors for developing AMS are going to be alcohol, benzodiazepines or any form of sleeping medication because they're going to affect your breathing, excessive exercise. So you may have people who are big, fit and strong and decide that they can run up the inclines here. People like that are more likely to actually uh, be affected by AMS because of the change in adrenaline and other hormones in the body caused by high um, intensity exercise. When you're climbing here, it's much better to go slowly, slowly, one step in front of the other and gradually go up uh, the inclines. Now I say gradually because there's another um, risk factor for AMS. A lot more people get AMS doing Mount Kilimanjaro because the ascent profile is so steep with no rest days. 
Here doing an Everest base camp trek, we're going slowly, slowly, we're going about 500 meters up a day, but then sleeping down lower to give our body the chance to acclimatize. And after about five days, we keep on getting a rest day where we're doing very little climbing at all, just to try and allow our bodies to get used to um, the altitude and hopefully reduce the likelihood of anybody getting AMS. Smoking is also another risk factor for AMS uh, because of how it's going to affect uh, your lungs and your ability to actually get oxygen into your body. Remembering that AMS is caused because you're breathing so hard, you're actually breathing off the carbon dioxide in your blood, meaning that you actually get a, um, a more alkaline blood. You breathe off um, the acid. And Diamox, which we've actually talked about, works for you to pee out base, for you to pee out an alkaline substance, bringing the pH of your blood back into a normal range. Technically, the diagnostic features for AMS are headache, GI symptoms, so nausea and vomiting really, fatigue, um, dizziness, but it's quite common to get AMS without the headaches. So just because somebody is feeling unwell, they've not got that headache, it's still worthwhile to consider that to be AMS. In fact, when you're actually at altitude, any problem should be considered to be acute mountain sickness until proven otherwise. To the degree that even a broken arm should be considered acute mountain sickness because the question is has that arm been broken because of a fall due to acute mountain sickness when are you likely to develop ams ams isn't really going to be a serious potential until you pass over about 2500 meters above sea level there are however a series of risk factors uh, that are going to increase the chances of you developing AMS. Some of those you can actually affect yourself. One of the other benefits of taking Diamox is that it's actually going to help your sleep because of the positive impact it's having on your breathing. When you get to altitude, some people can actually have difficulty with their breathing when they go to sleep, where they actually stop breathing because of the fact that they've blown off their carbon dioxide. And they don't breathe until uh, the chemical triggers in their uh, neck say, oh, hold on, the acid levels in your blood have risen to a level, you need to start breathing again. That's fine, but you're not actually getting the oxygen you need then either. And this can reduce some of that. So in summary, Diamox reduces the chance of altitude sickness by about 50%. You're going to get a better quality of sleep with the medication. And as it can be used as the treatment for AMS as well, you've also got that in your bag should things start to go south. In terms of the problems with Diamox, you're going to go to the loo more. You can get that really annoying pins and needles uh, with the Diamox. Uh, other than that, um, Really, only the impact is going to be on your wallet, and that's if you're buying it in the UK. So, from my perspective, definitely take Diamox if you're heading anywhere over 2,500 metres.